Hello there. Today I'm going to talk about Preview Flashback. Preview Flashback is a wonderful tool that helps you hook and hold an audience in seconds. You can use it in film, TV, stage, fiction. You could even use it in a speech. I'm going to explain it through a film you all know, Goodfellas. Old film, but it's got a very clear preview flashback. Now you remember the opening of Goodfellas where you have three men driving at night in a car and there's a banging sound as if the car's got a flat tire. So perfectly ordinary guys, a flat tire. They pull over, but the banging continues. They open the truck, the trunk, and inside, <laughs> to our horror, there's a bloodstained man begging for his life. One man stabs him repeatedly, cursing. A second shoots him twice. And we come in close on a th to a third, a young man, and we hear his voice over with the words, as far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Now this is completely chilling. It's confronting horrific. So after that, the story then flashes back to his adolescence when he first started running errands for the gangsters. Now let's just have a think about that. I mean, what an impact. And effortlessly, without noticing, we get the genre, the central characters, two others, a piece of plot, and although we don't realise it at the time, we get the moment where the young man descended irredeemably into evil. We'll pick that later as the jigsaw pieces come together. And what an amazing thing, amount of stuff to get together in that just that one scene. All right, so it's a flashback, quite clearly. More precise, it was probably actually really a flash forward, isn't it? But it's what I've termed a preview flashback, So because it's really part of the flashback type of film. And it's one of nine different types of flashback that I've isolated, all with a different structure and purpose and suitable for a different kind of story. I called it preview flashback because it's one crucial intriguing scene from the middle or ending um, three quarters of the way through or the ending of the story put at the start of the film to grab and hold you before taking you back to the start of the story and continuing uninterrupted to its end repeating that opening scene in its proper place in the story okay now it's one of the simplest and most powerful types of flashback so let's look at it Let's look at the structure in terms of the impact on storytelling. I've already said uh, you know, that, that, that it, there's a huge amount is transmitted immediately. Well, let's fl fl uh, preview flashbacks open a film or a TV episode. Now, usually the preview scene we see will be the second act turning point of a central character we'll be following. That is the moment three quarters of the way through the story when the central character is in big trouble. OK, it's a make or break moment, which you know, when it's used as a preview scene, as I've explained, it will provide a great hook. Right? We're immediately intrigued because a character uh, we don't know this character, but the character is in danger of some kind. And when we finally find out its full meaning later, uh, you know, we'll be pleased because now we completely understand. You know, aha, the aha moment. All the jigsaw pieces are in place and will be even more intrigued and impelled to find out what happens in the end. Everything comes together, which is great to have three quarters of the way through a film because it adds that extra energy. The two things here. Firstly, just a quick word about Goodfellas, the, the preview uh, scene in Goodfellas. It's not the second act turning point. It's the midpoint. Now, why is that chosen? Because, as I said, we'll later find out, it's the moment where our central character makes the first step into evil from which he'll never return. Before that, he was just a kid enjoying the glamour of the gangster world. Now, I've explained above that it's, it's hard hitting, but look at what it's doing. Just have a, a look at this. It's warning us that this film is not a gangster romp. It's a thought provoking film. It's a serious film. Now, remove that preview scene and until we get to the midpoint, the film could just be, you know, a gangster romp. It's like he does this, he does it. It'll actually be quite boring because, you know, you sort of think, well, let's get to the start of the story. See, the preview scene is ominous and it, it cleverly informs us of the whole first part of the film. So as we watch that innocent young teenager, we, teenager you know, we have hindsight. So that's the great thing. We, we're dreading this movement. We watch him in the full awareness that this nice young kid is moving towards moral destruction. OK, so these flashbacks and flashbacks, they'll give you hindsight, which is terribly powerful. So let's look at the structure in terms of flashback use generally. Now, very often it's possible to get the impact you want by using a preview flashback instead of a double narrative flashback, 
which is um, the kind of flashback structure that uses one narrative in the past to display the past of an enigmatic, enigmatic outsider and one in the present involving an investigator character, you know, possibly more than one uh, investigator character. They're trying to find out the truth about the enigmatic outsider's past. The action jumps between the two storylines. Now, double narrative is an excellent form, it's Citizen Kane, but it requires you to have strong stories in both past and present. And often it means inventing an investigator character in the present, because really what you want to tell is a story in the past. So you've got to invent a plot line about the investigation, plus you know, usually relationship lines with the other characters in the present. So unless you really feel the need for investigator character, which in a strong story with its accompanying uh, impact, you know, think of using a preview flashback. See, the problem about double narrative flashback is the need to keep servicing the two stories, jumping between them. So ask yourself is if what you really want to tell is simply the story in the past. And if, if that's the case, consider preview flashbacks. Save yourself some work. Okay, but also you can damage the film double narrative flashback um, if it's not the right one. If you um, really want to see a, a double narrative flashback film that should have been uh, actually a, <laughs> a preview flashback, see Pay It Forward. Pay It Forward has a story in the present which is completely redundant and the film stops in its tracks every time we, we go back into the present. It should really have been either, you know, bookend flashback or maybe just simply, um, you know, set in, set, starting in the past and continuing that way. No, no flashbacks at all. Anyhow, I hope that was useful. Do subscribe if you'd like more of these and bye for now.